Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There used to be a really good series of ads uh, for Budweiser. The tagline was, know when to say when, right? Not all fights are bettable. What you're trying to do is you're trying to look at mispricings, right? You're trying to see odds that, quite frankly, don't reflect reality. When the odds actually match reality, the casino is quite good and making it difficult, if not impossible, to hedge to most likely scenarios. Such is the case in a fight that I think is far more competitive than the public realizes. And that's this fight. It's a light heavyweight unification fight this weekend between boxing legend, certain Hall of Famer, one of the best middleweight champions in history, now fighting at light heavy, different division, Bernard Hopkins. And he's fighting, in my opinion, right, hear me clearly here, right, the best athlete in the division. I believe that's Babel Chumanoff, right? Now here's the problem. The hedge I'd like to do, and you know that I'm trying to get leverage from the casino, right? I believe boxing's too risky to try to make one bet without a hedge that has a, you know, 10% rate of return. That's not what I'm looking for. I'll bet on hedges that I believe will net me 10%, right? Because that takes into account a greater amount of outcomes. But I'm not going to bet on one guy if I believe the risk is too great. Now I consider this fight to be close. In my opinion, the two most likely outcomes are Bernard Hopkins winning by decision or Babu Chumanoff simply winning the fight. Right, understand Hopkins hasn't been knocked out for decades, not years, decades. Right, he simply hasn't been. Shumanov to me is explosive. Has an outside shot at a knockout if he can play his cards right. The problem though is of course when you look at Shumanov and you look at Hopkins, there is the possibility that Hopkins gets inside on Shumanoff where Shumanoff isn't that good. Now what I've done for those of you who want to study the fight, who want to know why I think this fight is competitive and why I think Babu Shumanoff is the best athlete at 175 pounds. And understand some of the other names at 175 include Chad Dawson, Sergei Kovalev, Adonis Stevenson, right? They're all at 175. Take a look at two videos that I have listed on my channel page here on YouTube, right? The first is easily one of the most controversial fights of the last 10 years. It involves Babu Shumanov. It's Shumanov against Gabriel Campillo. Now understand, as you look at the highlights and as you see, Campillo beat Shumanoff from pillar to post. Understand that Jerry Roth scored this fight 115-113 for Shumanoff and Patricia Jarman scored the fight 117-111 for Babu Shumanoff. Right? Understand that this was a title fight Campillo, in my opinion, should have been awarded the decision 
by a few rounds. Now I don't want you to go by my opinion. What I'd actually prefer to the hardcore boxing fans out there is that you watch the fight. You can jump forward and look at key rounds and stuff like that. But the fight is very controversial. It's how Shumanov got the title. Right? Understand too, as you watch Shumanov, Shumanov didn't have many fights before this fight. Shumanov got to the title in less than 10 pro fights. Think Leon Spinks. Right? So he's green in the video. And what you're going to see is that Campillo, who's not a big puncher, behind a jab is able to come forward on Shumanov. And when he gets inside and has Shumanov backing up, he's doing damage. And as you look down and as you see Shumanov's feet, you're going to see that Shumanov doesn't have great footwork in that fight, right? In fact, Campillo is able to know when Shumanov can't throw punches back, such as Shumanov's footwork. In other words, he's just backing up. He looks awkward. He looks off balance. Campillo comes inside, is throwing combinations, and Campillo knows exactly when to come inside. Because when Shumanov's feet are in a certain position as he backs up, he doesn't back up by keeping his feet. Let's say this is a right leg and a left leg, and this is a right leg. He doesn't keep his feet together, so he's always in position to throw punches. No, Shumanov backs up like this, and the problem is when he throws a foot back like this, you know he can't throw a power punch with the hand associated with this foot right so if he has this foot back here he's not going to be able to hit you with a strong left hand right so Shumanov looks incredibly green in that fight simply put he looks overmatched but here's what you need to know number one that fight's actually a rematch Campillo and Shumanov fought before that fight, right? Campillo is the kind of guy who picks things up as fights go along. You may recall, he fought Tavares Cloud. He got blown out early, not down early. Then he figures out Cloud's defects, dominates Cloud. I know that fight also had controversial scoring, but understand Campillo makes adjustments. The tape that you're going to see on my channel page here is Campillo after having seen Shumanov for several rounds. Right? The second thing is that the tape is an old tape. It's several years ago. I believe it's 2010 or thereabouts. Now I'm here to tell you that Shumanov's game has changed materially right when you look at the Campillo tape Shumanov doesn't look like a great athlete what I want you to do is to look at his tape in his last fight against Tomas Kovacs you're gonna see a guy who quite frankly looks like a different fighter now understand, Shumanov has been the champ for years. He hasn't been that active. But when you look at the Kovacs tape, and I understand, Kovacs, you know, isn't viewed as an elite fighter, even though he has a distinguished amateur pedigree. But what you're going to see is Shumanov literally maintaining distance. He can't be hit with the jab. He's two-handed to the point where his money punch is really a straight right hand. But he even decks Kovacs, who goes down in the first round, the second round, and the third round. He even decks him with a left hook. Right? Shumanov also throws hard punches and can throw the punches one after the other. The other thing I like with Shumanov is that Shumanov goes to the body. 
right? I believe that this guy is a guy who has literally lifted his game fight after fight. The punches are straighter now than they were in the Campillo tape, right? They're much straighter, right? Understand the distance, in my opinion, is masterful. The athleticism is such that he can stay outside and actually play a bit of a vertical game, right? Now, in my opinion, sooner or later, Bernard Hopkins is going to look 49 years old. You know what? Athleticism has a way of overwhelming technique at the extremes. In other words, you know, Shumanov has exactly the kind of out-of-the-box athleticism, in my opinion, that might simply overwhelm Hopkins. Keep in mind, against certain fighters who can fight at a certain intensity. Hopkins needs to take breaks. Right? We'll call them bathroom breaks, even though he doesn't go to the bathroom. You remember the Joe Calzaghe fight? Hopkins does everything there to take breaks. The Roy Jones fight, the rematch. Hopkins does everything there to take breaks. Now, I'll leave it up to you to look at film and to figure out whether Calzaghe hit him low or whether, you know, every shot that Hopkins claimed was a rabbit punch and that Roy Jones fight was a rabbit punch. The point, though, is that Hopkins needs to pace himself, right? I'm not sure if he'll be able to do that against Babu Shumanov, right? I also think, too, Hopkins getting inside might be a bit more difficult. Because Shumanov, of course, now has figured out how to stay outside of the jab. This is one of those champions who, in my opinion, quite frankly, has learned on the job. Now understand, there are some wrinkles, and they're huge. Nassim Richardson, Bernard Hopkins' trainer, has actually worked with Shumanov. That should be a red flag. Right? The last thing you want is an elite fighter with a trainer with knowledge of the other fighter in his corner. Think Freddie Roach, Oscar De La Hoya's former trainer. Right? He was in Oscar's corner when Oscar fought Floyd. Think Freddie Roach in Manny Pacquiao's corner when Pacquiao fought Oscar. Right? Freddie, literally. After that fight, talked about how he threw Oscar in the ring with Yvonne Calderon when he was training Oscar. And he saw things in training camp that suggested that Oscar couldn't handle certain things Calderon was doing, like speed and movement. And Calderon was a smaller fighter like Manny Pacquiao, right? Pacquiao was viewed as the smaller fighter at that time. Well, here... You have Nassim Richardson. There's a YouTube video up online where Richardson talks about having been with Shumanov. You have Nassim Richardson having been with Shumanov, talking about Shumanov. And then, of course, when you look at the uh, Kovacs fight, you'll see Bernard Hopkins is in the crowd and he's openly campaigning to fight Shumanov. So clearly the Hopkins people feel that they have the blueprint on how to beat him, right? Richardson left Shumanov because Richardson claims that Shumanov wouldn't listen to him. Well, here's what you need to know about Shumanov. Very hardcore personality, right? Think of an entrepreneur. Think of Richard Branson. A guy who is not afraid to swim against the tide, right? A guy who envisions an outcome and asks himself why things aren't being done that way and then goes out and tries to do it. It might shock a lot of people to learn that light heavyweight champion Babu Shumanov doesn't have a head trainer. He calls himself the head 
coach. One of his chief advisors is his brother. Right? There's no Nacho Beristain, Joel Diaz, Robert Garcia, Emmanuel Stewart, Nassim Richardson in his corner. He has guys in his corner. But it's a team. And he is the boss. There's an interview here online with him where he's asked why he doesn't have a head trainer. And Shumanov, who is outside the box, understand, this is a guy who used to promote his own fights. Now he's with Golden Boy, but he used to promote his own fights. Right? This is a guy who fought for the title and won the title early in his career. Right? This is a guy who most people don't realize has been a light heavyweight champion for years. But yet he's only fought in 15 fights as I make this video. Right? This is a guy who, quite frankly, was an Olympian. Shumanoff explains in the YouTube interview that no trainer is going to be able to give him the kind of around-the-clock attention, the kind of 24-hour attention that he can give himself. Now, when you see him in the ring, his technique is unorthodox. Right? You look at his jab, and it's an interesting jab. It's kind of like a James the Gale type jab at times. It's really more of a paw. Right? You, you see his stance. You see how he's outside. It's unorthodox. Right? Doesn't look like he's trained by John David Jackson or Sugar Hill. No, this is an outside-the-box guy with a unique style. But I'm here to tell you that with his athleticism, it works. Right? I'm here to tell you that personality-wise, I don't believe there is any trick that Bernard Hopkins can pull that would intimidate or mentally discourage Babu Chumanov. Right? You need to understand entrepreneur types like this guy. Right? They understand that the odds are against them. They know they're swimming upstream. Right? When Richard Branson types enter into a market, they know they're established players in the market. They know there's a hierarchy. They know that everyone believes there's a right way to do things. They also know that there's something called evolution. Right? That the ideas that we thought were the right ideas, let's say in Jack Johnson's day, changed by the time we get to Joe Lewis's day, right? Changed by the time we get to Ali's day, right? And have changed to now, right? We'll call this the Klitschko era, right? So Babu Chumanoff doesn't believe he needs an Emmanuel Stewart in his corner. Right? Understand, too, who the guy is. His family's wealthy. Right? This is a guy who is fighting because he has a passion for boxing. His words, not mine. Understand, too, this is a guy who moved to Las Vegas to, you know, bolster his boxing career at a time when he did not know how to speak English. Right? This is a guy who, you know, in a very short period of time has picked up English and then you find out he actually speaks five languages. Right? So to me, this fight has warning signs all over the place. Right? I view John Pascal before that Hopkins fight as a bit mercurial. Right? As not as mentally focused as Babu Chumanov, right? I thought that there were going to be times in that fight where Hopkins had a chance to rest, right? I thought there were going to be times in that fight where Hopkins would be able to just jump in and clinch Pascal. So I took Hopkins in both Pascal fights. Here, based on what I'm seeing on film of Chumanov of late, 
I'm hesitant to take Hopkins. Hesitant. Number one, Hopkins is older. Number two, Shumanoff has had the benefit of looking at Hopkins against Pascal. Right? Understand, Shumanoff is an explosive puncher just like Jean Pascal. Right? Also, I believe that Shumanoff isn't going to get caught up in shootouts. Right? Shumanoff will abandon the jab at times and will just stay outside and will just lunge in with power punches. Right? He can lead with that right hand. So, to sum up, I don't believe the world fully knows who Babu Trumanoff is. He's hardly fought. But yet somehow the gamblers have bid down the Shumanoff side of the play less than two to one. That's significant when you're facing a Hall of Fame fighter, a much better known fighter like Bernard Hopkins. Right? I believe the smart money is undecided on this fight. I believe Babu Chumanov has a chance here to really shake things up. I believe that Bernard Hopkins and his trainer Nassim Richardson might think they're fighting the Shumanov who got dominated by Gabriel Campillo several years ago. I believe Nassim Richardson might be going off of his own observations of Babu Chumanov's training camp, right? Richardson has called Chumanov inexperienced. But just understand, this guy is explosive. That's the best way I can put it, right? He's explosive. When he comes forward and he throws a combination, I'm not sure if even a skilled counterpuncher can completely risk it, right? By staying in the pocket and trying to counter the guy. Right? I know Shumanov is built to go 12 rounds at a certain intensity. Look at the Uzelkov fight. Shumanov gets dropped early in that fight, gets off the canvas, goes to work. Folks, there's a ferocity there that's hard for anyone to match. I think this guy's an elite athlete. I'm on the sidelines. I think this fight is too risky. Hopkins, by decision, is less than even money. Right? I can't hedge that with Shumanoff to win the fight. And I don't have enough confidence in Hopkins in this match to assume that Hopkins is going to win the decision if there's a decision. Right? So, I believe this is a must-see fight. As T.O. used to say, Terrell Owens, get your popcorn ready. I think this is a coming out party for Babu Chumanoff, whether he wins or not. I think Hopkins is going to be in there trying to clinch, trying to grab, trying to slow him down. I think, though, the mental toughness of Chumanoff is just going to prevent Chumanoff from giving up in this fight. I don't believe he's going to get frustrated like Karo Marat. Right? And I believe a guy like this, who is in the sport because he's passionate about the sport, who views himself as his own head coach, who's in this kind of physical condition, I think he's a formidable opponent. I don't know who's going to win this fight. I'm certainly going to watch it. I recommend you do too. I also recommend you look at the two videos I have up on my YouTube channel page. Right? It's Shumanoff against Campillo, and he gets off. There's no way any judge, in my opinion, should have given Shumanoff that fight 117-111. That's ridiculous. Then I want you to look at Shumanoff's last fight against Kovacs. He looks different. You're going to be stunned at how hard and how crisp the guy's punches are. They're hard, they're crisp, they're frequent. The guy's explosive. Let me hear your thoughts. 
Leave your comments for me here in the section to YouTube. If you see a prop on this fight that you feel folks need to consider, let us know about it. Thanks for stopping by.